Christian character. So Christian character is understanding and developing Christian maturity. Okay, so here are your notes. Here are the notes. One of those and one of those. Okay, so... The word character is actually a Greek word, and that's how it's spelt in Greek, even though you use different letters in Greek. Character with a K. So the Greek term, it means an engraved representation. Like people have a photograph of someone or a painting of someone. That's the meaning of character. It is a representation of that person in the form of some sort of engraving. So if we look at Hebrews 1 verse 3. It says about Jesus who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So Jesus is the character of the Father. So it, because Jesus is the representation, he's his image. It says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So growth in maturity is not a topic that people do immediately. They firstly deal with gifts of the spirit or authority of the believer like we've been doing. But spiritual growth is important. And it parallels physical growth. If you want to grow physically, you need to spend time and obedience to the laws of nature. So you don't, you want to grow healthy, then you need to eat proper food, isn't it? There's laws of nature which govern physical growth. We were planting some trees. Uh, small seeds and if we don't do the proper thing it will die and so even us as as young children if we don't eat the proper food we will get sick and if it also takes time we can't expect the child to be an adult and we don't expect the child to be an adult we are willing to to wait for that time and so as you are a physical person, you are also a spiritual person. So spiritual growth has the same qualities. It requires the correct nourishment and time. There's stages of growth. The five stages of growth are babyhood and then early childhood. And late teenhood. So we can see that this young child is past the babyhood stage. She's in early childhood. Okay, they're both actually in early childhood. 
Uh, Johanna's a little bit further along the line. Soon she will be in late childhood, teenager. Then after that is manhood or womanhood. And then after that comes fatherhood. We could say marriage. You know that you are already in womanhood for a long time. <laughs> then you became a mother. Can you see the distinction? It's not the same. Maybe you think you know everything before you become a mother. Then when you become a mother, I remember looking at mothers and saying, can't they take control of that child? Thinking like, I already know, but until you know how to do it. Stage one is babyhood. The Greek word is brephos. This is marked by ignorance, innocence, and self-centeredness. These are the qualities of a child, a young baby. What are their qualities? Innocence, ignorance, and self-centeredness. And equally, there's a spiritual parallel. When people are newly in the faith, they are innocent. If, if someone preaches a false doctrine, they will just go. They don't even know what's good, what's bad. They will eat anything. If you give a baby a rock, a stone, it will eat the stone. Number two, ignorance. They don't know what is right or wrong. And number three, they are always thinking about themselves. So they need, they need to be loved. They need nurturing. And they need to be protected. And that's the same thing that we have when we are looking after new believers. And the dangers that they have is, the dangers that they are faced with is that they will doubt the word of God. And they will fear bad things happening to them. And they will have rejection. They will have a sense of rejection because they're concerned about other people, what other people think of them. So maybe you can see a lot of this happening around you. And people who have just heard the message which we, we've preached, if they're at a point of decision, maybe they even have opened their heart to the Lord. But they are faced with these three things. Doubt about what we are saying. Doubt about who we are. Fear that maybe this is the wrong decision that they have made. And rejection from their friends. They will feel it. Remember the lady yesterday? She just got one negative comment. Just one. And already it just crushed her. That's how babies are like. Just one small rejection and they will feel it. But we move on to the second stage which is early childhood. That is called nepios. That's where you get nappy from. From the Greek. So here are the characteristics. Now this is the stage where they are. They are curious they have curiosity. You know, maybe they see a so-and-so preacher and that is a prophet. Look, let's go and check him out. But they haven't really seen the whole thing. So they also need to be careful because they're curious. They want to know everything around them. They're always asking questions. They are also impulsive, which means they act without good reasons and they have a high impression ability meaning whatever you will say or whatever influ outside influence will really affect them that's why we're saying from the age of two to five is the formation year the formation years of the child because they are the most 
impressionable. That's why whatever habits they develop at that time, if they're going to be watching YouTube, they will probably watch it for the rest of their life. If they're going to read, they will, re they will, they will develop a study habit. That is, this is the early childhood. These are the children we're talking about. Their needs is guidance. They need attention. They need love. And the dangers are they are easily led astray. Easily. If a stranger comes, they can say, here's some sweets. They will go after the sweets and the stranger will just catch them. Very easy to be led astray. And they have faith, but it is unreliable. You can't depend on their faith. So if you want a leader, you will not find a nepios. But you are developing this. So as pastors, we need to understand this. These, and as we are now moving forward to having a church, we need to also understand the needs and the dangers. Characteristic to identify what kind of one it is. So let's identify it with a characteristic. Number three is late childhood. Paideon. Now a late childhood is pre... Is it a teenager? It is a teenager in fact. Okay. So this person thinks that they're an adult already. Okay? <laughs> Rebellion. They know it. So why should they listen to you? Discipline issues are a problem. Sometimes many worship leaders are in this condition. You can't tell them, oh, you need to just step down a little bit. They will feel, no. Who, who is the pastor to tell me I need to step down. I need to pray more. Who is he to tell me? So if, if there's a problem with the worship, he might tell them that. He might try to discipline them. Uh, their needs is they need understanding. Teenager needs to share their feelings because a lot of things are going on, new things. They're getting new feelings and we need to get their trust so that they will tell us instead of telling a stranger. Some even teenage girls... They lose their, their, their purity with a stranger because nobody else was listening to them. That's why there's teenage pregnancy. Uh, they need love, but they also do need discipline. And the dangers are disobedience and rebellion. This is where the, the, the devil's sin comes in. Pride. When people are proud... Who's more proud than a teenager? I think they are very proud. Uh, but even manhood, some people become proud. Okay, so they need, they need to, to uh, not be rebellious, not be proud. And the danger is they're not yet in a state of maturity where they see the danger of the pride. They don't... They, 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 and some of those people who are dealing with we, we, we brought them here. One, that one person who came, I believe, is in this condition. They're at this stage. And they think they know everything. They haven't been to Bible school, and they're saying that they want to start a church. No. Or they want to choose the church. They need to go to a good church, not just be, be saying, I'll go this one, I'll go this one, I'll go this one. Mm. Church hoppers. Stage four is manhood. So this is nian, nianiskos, nios. So here, this person is spirit dominated. That means that most of their life, most of their life is is following the Lord and they are bold and they are God-focused rather than being self-centered. So you can recognize this kind of person. This is the kind of person that we're looking for to be a leader. The ones who are in a late childhood still need to go through a process of breaking down and humbling before they can come here. You recognize these people are God-focused. They're always focused on God. They're spirit-dominated. 
And what they need is they need encouragement and opportunities to serve. That's why we're saying that's where we'll find the leaders because they're looking for a way they they can they can seek God, they can serve God, but they will they have no fruit yet in their life. They are mature, but they are not yet producing. That's why they're not parents. They're not producing, so. The, there is a danger they will be frustrated in what they are doing. Frustrated. Just be careful there with that microphone. They will be frustrated. And what it means is they, they may be discouraged. They may be discouraged. Let, let's see where we are because we are in either stage four or we are in either stage five. I hope we are not in stage three. Stage five is fatherhood, pater. Now, that is someone who is resourceful. They make things happen. They're committed and they have compassion. It's very easy to, to talk about other people, but do we care about them? That's the difference. I know we had many people, they like to talk about so-and-so leader, so-and-so this, so-and-so that. But do they really care about the person or are they just talking about them? That's why we need to become mature enough that whatever we are doing, we are having compassion and we're finding solutions as a resourceful person. Here are the needs. They have needs. The needs is that they need to be appreciated. That's why sometimes they have pastor's day because the pastor is so tired. Nobody appreciates him. He does all the work. And the problem is when you start to produce the church and your church is growing, you might feel that you've reached a stage. I know some churches, they have 20 members and they've had those, isn't it? They've had those 20 members for the past 10 or 20 years. Then the continued growth is now an issue because even though you, have, you are a father, you've produced a church, it's a comfort zone. And that's the danger of being, you, you're just comfortable. I know if I was to approach some pastors, to start a pioneer, they would say, well, it's okay, you know. I say, come and join me in prayer. They say, well, it's okay, I've got other things, or it's okay what you're doing, or maybe you can join these people, they will pray with you. So it's kind of like a, what's a spiritual retirement? It's when you have gray hair, and you're ready to just sit back, and you're ready, you're done with your preaching, your ministry. But I don't think we should retire from our ministry. So developing a Christian character, we can see from one of my presentations, we are spirit, soul, and body. And we are born again in our spirit. We, our new creation is in the spirit, but we are responsible for our soul and our body. And if we don't take responsibility, the Bible shows in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that our body and soul will be burned up, but our spirit will be saved. That will be a very bad thing. You'll just arrive in heaven and there will just be a spirit. Okay. Uh, renewing the mind. So here is the responsibility, okay? We're responsible for our soul, which is our mind. Romans 12.12, 12, transformation through a mind renewal. Okay, so that scripture is clearly talking about a mind renewal. What, what a scripture is that? Can you remember? Romans 12. Yeah, I think it's 12 2. One, two. Romans. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's much information. You can go on the internet. You can watch the news. And what is news all about? It's about the mind. They are giving you something to feed your mind. When you're watching those programs, it's to do what? To feed your mind. But if you watch them, you are conforming to the world. So what we need to do is to be transformed through a mind renewal, and that mind renewal will only take place by meditating on God's Word. God's Word will reshape our thoughts. That's the mind. Now, what about the body? Controlling the physical body. We know that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. Let's read that one. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Okay. Here. Yeah. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? So God, because of Jesus' blood, God will dwell inside something which is filthy, but with the intention of making that thing pure. He cannot dwell into something that is filthy because he's the Holy Spirit, isn't it? He can't. Sometimes it's too filthy and he can never dwell there. And I've seen cases where I've prayed for people and the Holy Spirit comes in, but there's a demon there. So there's a fight and the demon manifests until the demon comes out. Then the Holy Spirit can stay inside. But still there are area, other areas which might not be from a demon possession, but other areas which are filthy. There could be impure thoughts, there could be impure deeds. But what it's saying is that because of Jesus, what Jesus has done, God will pass over those things. He'll look over those things and he will still come and dwell inside. But we are still... We are still supposed to be stewards of our body. We are stewards of our possessions, but we are also stewards of our, our body. And so these are the key disciplines. There's not every discipline, but the key ones is our time is limited. So we need good time management. And the time management will manage our prayer time, our Bible study, and also controlling the tongue. Okay, so time management is for all of our, our duties in life. Our duties with our families, our duties with our employments, our duties with our jobs. And then secondly, thirdly, uh, we must have forgiveness. And that's essential for our spiritual health. Okay, so that's how we can control the physical body is by, by forcing it. Because here, these things need, need a, a habit to be developed. Otherwise, it will never happen. Fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so the fruit of the Spirit is Christ's character in believers. Remember I said, Character means a representation of something or someone else. So when I say character, it means we are an engraved representation. So Christians are to become the exact reflection of Christ's character. Okay, not like you see, this is a picture, but it's not the same 
as the actual person. So you've seen that sometimes someone makes a picture, but you see that's not the same as the person. Our re- character must be the exact same character of Jesus Christ. So when people see us, they must see Jesus Christ. So how does it happen? It is a growing into maturity in him. A process that requires time and obedience. Christian character is developed through the presence of the Holy Spirit and is evident as believers grow. Okay, it is evident. Okay, it is evident meaning sit down, put down the umbrella. It is evident. What does evident mean? It means it has these things which you can see. And Galatians 5:22 and 23 we can read here. Galatians 5:22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So the point is that, if you read here in your notes at the top, that Christian character is evident. We've shown the different stages of, of Christian character. At the top it says Christian character is developed through the presence of the Holy Spirit and is evident as believers grow in godliness. These are fruits of the spirit. Okay? And they are not evident immediately as we could see that there's different stages of spiritual growth, but they become evident. and evidence is measured by spiritual maturity is measured by the presence of these fruits in one's life so we have to understand that and normally if you're especially in in the late childhood stage the teenager stage you don't see these things as being relevant I've seen many Christians they act as if there's other things which are more important how they can how they can uh exercise their spiritual gifts how they can pray for the sick how they can uh, lay hands how they can have a worship time how they can enjoy the presence of God but they're still in late childhood because they don't see that this is actually what we are looking for and that is the evidence of the spiritual maturity okay so conclusion we have to recognize you can see it there recognizing the stages of spiritual growth helps believers to strive for maturity that's why we do the study because we want to strive ourselves and we want also to help other people to strive to maturity that's why we're doing the study and understand others spiritual journeys you can see that's the purpose recognizing the stages of spiritual growth helps believers strive themselves and also to understand others spiritual journeys so when you're not at the fatherhood stage or not even at the manhood stage generally you're not so concerned about other people's spiritual journeys maybe you think that your spiritual journey is the model is the one for everyone to follow that's how like a teenager is or someone in that stage is that they're trying to make that journey to be the standard for everyone but then when we move to maturity we realize that we begin to realize that other people have a different spiritual journey and we begin to see can we help those other people to 
in their own journey to be uh, striving for spiritual growth and striving for maturity. Okay? So renewing the mind means also accepting God's discipline. God will discipline us, so we need to accept it. And we also need to forgive others. That's a key important point to developing Christian character and living a fruitful spiritual life. So we have to pursue maturity at every stage. So it doesn't matter if someone is still in the baby stage. We were also once in that baby stage. So we are pursuing maturity, trying to get people through every stage of their progress in their walk with Christ. So let us check out the questions. There's a few questions on page three, if you open it up. First question is, what is the meaning of the Greek word character as used in Hebrews 1.3? So Hebrews 1.3 was that verse, do you remember? Which is talking about Jesus being the yeah, so let's see this. Hebrews 1 verse 3 again. Who being the brightness of his glory and express image. So what is it? A, a symbol of faith. A tool used for engraving. I don't know if that's correct. That might not be correct. <laughs> Yeah, using gray, I think it's, that's, that's the correct answer, but it's just worded incorrectly. What's it supposed to be? What we said in our presentation was at the top of the notes, it says engraved representation. Okay. Question two. What is essential For Christian character to develop and become evident. A. Immediate conversion. B. Attending church services. C. Obedience and growth in godliness. D. Memorizing scripture. Okay, so obedience, that's why we have to, um, we have to develop the fruit of the Spirit. Three, so obedience is essential. At the babyhood stage, question three, which of the following is a characteristic? Boldness, no. Rebellion, no. Ignorance, yes. Commitment, no. What Now question four, what is the primary battlefield in the process of renewing the mind? What is... Yeah? Well, it's got the answer, same as the question. What is the primary battlefield in the process of, I would say, in the process of spiritual maturity? Change that. And then... Yes. Okay. Question five, which of the following is not listed as a fruit of the Spirit? Love, wisdom, patience, self-control. Yeah, people want to be wise, but actually it's not a gift of the Spirit. Six, according to the leg, it's a gift, not a fruit. According to the lecture, I'll take that up. What should a person do when God shines his light into an area of his life? Yeah. I, I've seen so many uh, people in the past year or so who ignore it. We can see clearly that God is shining a light into their life. 
and we are just assisting by saying actually God is shining the light but they don't want to do it what will be the result do you think if people ignore it what well, what we could see is there's a few other options here which are interesting number 1 a is ignore it the other wrong answer is seek advice from others that is also common they will just see is there a confirmation maybe they're actually looking for a naysayer somebody who will say no actually just forget about it not good so then the other wrong answer is wait for a sign god has already said it and now you want another sign god will not talk again he's done Number 7 what is the significance of abiding in the vine according to John 15:1 to 8 we didn't actually read that bible verse and then it wasn't in the slides okay material wealth some people have the perception that they're going to get material wealth uh abiding in the vine does it make a person immune to sin no is it necessary for bearing spiritual fruit yes it guarantees entrance to heaven abiding in the vine that's the wrong attitude because that's just saying that um i'm in christ just to get to heaven instead of being in christ to bear fruit while we're here on on the earth okay good i think we're done with all of this and let us just look at our other page the other notes so this one here which has christian character at the front here we can see a breakdown of the spiritual growth there's a table there at the bottom yeah five stages of growth and the different names of those different stages and also a scripture verse which covers each of those okay we can look a bit deeper into that especially on the last a last uh par- last column babyhood what's first peter 22 so first peter 22 according to this is the scripture for babyhood Peter 22 Okay so this is as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby so that's a biblical proof that there is first a, a newborn baby secondly there is growth that is needed Okay S- number 2 early childhood So here is the the Bible reference is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 let's go to verse 1 Oh I lost it Okay. And I brethren could not speak unto as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in Christ. So this is not newborn but this is babes. This is toddlers. What was happening? They were saying I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, I follow different groups. I go to Benny Hinn, I go to to Alliance. What church are you? Oh, you're not Alliance. Then you're no good. <laughs> Sectarian, you know. Remember that time when you meet a Christian. Oh, what church you go to? 
That's the first question. That is a sign of a babe. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto were you not able to bear it, neither now are ye able. And you are carnal, for whereas among you is envying, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk with men? And people are saying they follow this person, they follow this person, and also they want to be on the top. Now, Paul is saying it doesn't matter. Apollos watered, but God is the one who made it happen. Yeah. When people get, get gifts of the Spirit too early, then they can develop the wrong character. They can think that they can do everything. It's the gifts of the Spirit. I was telling you about that young boy in Kenya he was praying and people were rolling on the ground and he was not in a mature state. New deacon. So they are... Okay, so now, in, in the same scripture where Paul is talking about this, it's the same chapter which talks about uh, being saved as by fire. Here in verse 15, same, same chapter. So my battery's out. But it says that you can check it out. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10, if you can find it in your Bible. First Corinthians 3 verse 10. I have some more battery. First Corinthians three verse ten it says mm. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have made a foundation and another buildeth it, buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Yeah, so it's at that stage where we need to be careful what we are doing when you're in early childhood. You're actually building their life, isn't it? You have to be careful what they're learning, what they're eating. It's at that foundation stage. Because isn't it in the same scripture, Paul says, no other foundation can be laid except Christ, and I've laid the foundation. But let every man take heed how he builds on that foundation. Okay, now, late childhood. Could you open to Hebrews 12, verse 5, and we'll see the, the Bible verse about that. This is, the, this is the dangerous stage because a teenager has, has some strength. That means they can move, isn't it? They can have an impact. They can do damage. Hebrews 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. Chastisement, discipline. Children. Yeah, children isn't it? still. He's calling them children. And what, is he, what else does he say? That he's their father. Okay? Hebrews 12 verse 5. He's, he's saying, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. That means that they need discipline. They need to recognize that they need to humble themselves and not rebel against the discipline. It says here, nor faint when thou art rebuked. I think some people that I've rebuked, they've fainted. But even though I do it in a gentle way, I'm trying to do it in a way that helps them. I'm trying to show them their fault. 
Because I think here many people just want you to say yes, yes, yes. And then finally when the time comes where you have to say no, it's like just one, one small no, it's like everything is shattered in their life. And that's what it says, do not faint when thou art rebuked of him. Okay, let's move on to the manhood scripture. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. By the way, that, that, that reference in Hebrews about sons, about children, carries on. But it's mainly talking about how God disciplines us and chastens us. So manhood is First John 3 verse 13. It says... First John three, thirteen and fourteen. Marvel not, my brethren, if thou if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we have we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Mm, I'm not sure if that's the correct Bible verse, but in any case, what we can see is someone who's mature enough that he understands persecution. He understands conflicts that he is undergoing for the sake of Christ. He understands that he is going to have to uh, go through a testing period. So that kind of person who realizes that, Necker recognizes, is a person that can be raised up to leadership. So we saw their qualities. They're victorious. They are spirit-dominated. So they pray through it. If there's a problem, they are victorious. If they're a teenager or younger and there's a problem, they will always find someone to try and help them, try and help them. But this kind of person can stand on their own. They're victorious. They're spirit-dominated. They know what's good for them. They are esteem earthly things lightly. Yes. They esteem earthly things lightly. I think, actually, you know the correct verse? It's not 1 John 3. It's 1 John 2. That's a typo error, so we can change that. 1 John chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. This is about fathers, uh, 14. I think it's young men. Okay, so it's the same, same chapter, just, just one chapter before. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. First John two fourteen. Yes. I have written unto you. I write father. unto you. I, From I have 13. written. Sorry. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have not you have known the Father. Mm. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Okay, so here you can see it mentions fathers, but it also mentions young men. And I believe that's what we're talking about here. These are young men. They've reached manhood and they have overcome the wicked one in the first case. And secondly, they are strong and the word of God abides in them and they have overcome the wicked one. So they are strong. They have overcome the wicked one and they are, they are, 
and strong in the word. And the word is inside. So the final stage is First Corinthians chapter four, verse fourteen. The final stage, which is parenthood. This is the stage where we want people to go. First ultimately, First Corinthians four, fourteen. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Mm. Four and verse fourteen to fifteen. For thou, for though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Okay, so. Paul is saying that he has made converts and disciples. So the difference between the young man and the father is exactly that. The you know that you are not in the manhood, but in the fatherhood stage. If you have begotten, begotten souls, and that means that they have come from darkness, from The power of Satan, and they are into light. So this will be somebody who is in a position of leadership in the church, who ha- who has a flock, who is looking after the flock. Then he and and he is also producing new believers. So this person also is committed to the next generation. You can see this here. So it's very easy for us to be bold, to be strong for ourselves. But what is our commitment to the next generation? And there is one Bible verse which comes to mind: Second Timothy two verse two. To conclude this topic, Second Timothy two verse two. If you find it, you can read it. And the things thou that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So teaching others to teach others will guarantee a. Next generation. If we just teach others, it will stop when we stop. But if we teach others to teach others, then already、That's、we have multiplied. Teaching is teaching other from the other from the wrong church. Yes. So we are making our way forward in the midst of like. A swamp, trying to walk through, but we're trying to find a way to the other side, and I believe we will see the other side. There are always going to be these kinds of things, in, especially in an environment which is toxic with idols, statues, all of these witchcrafts. Witchcraft is. Is at an alarming rate here in Tagbilaran. I was not aware of it, but now I can see that it is at an alarming rate. So we will see those kind of challenges in this environment. But Christ has made us the victor. We can say that He has. So let's stand up and pray. Just commit this to Him. Thank you, Father, for this message on Christian character. We believe it is important to know, so that we can see our own progress and also help others in their spiritual journey. And we pray that we will be fruitful. In Jesus' name, Amen.